Hello everyone, what's good? What's poppin'? It's your girl Caroline, that's me. And welcome to another hair install. I don't know, I'm just so excited to be back doing my start to finish hair installs because not gonna lie to y'all, I have been, uh, my wigs, uh, maybe to y'all they feel like they've been hitting, but to me, I don't know, I just is having, I feel like I've lost touch with the technique, because it's all about the technique, technique. I don't know if there's a name about that. I think it's a Spongebob thing, but yes. As I'm teaching y'all stuff, I'm also learning things. We learn it together. But anyways, how are you guys doing today? It's currently Friday for me that I'm filming this, and I wonder what day it is. But regardless what day it is, how are you doing? I hope you're doing it well me i'm trying to do well just broke my finger but it's okay because nothing makes me feel like a brand new girl than a brand new wig you know okay let's get into today's install so today we're working with this wig from somber hair company this is the hair i love when hair comes in these little satin bags perfect for storing your hair long term i hate the boxes they're bulky cut the cardboard waste okay so I don't know if you're noticing, but your girl, I've been doing a lot of color. I feel like color, I used to be a, a jet black or just black girl, but color, I'm telling you, colored wigs are my favorite thing, especially pre-colored. I don't know how to color hair, so I love pre-colored wigs. It's something new, okay. I was thinking it was going to be blonde. I'm kind of surprised by this color. It's kind of like a, like a number four. Yeah, it's going to be like a number four with some ginger, when I say ginger, light brown, y'all, <laughs> I've set every color under this site, but y'all see the color, whatever, what color would y'all call this, I'll look in the description, but it's like a, not blonde, but like a dirty blonde, girl, I don't know, it's cute, it's cute, that's what I know, I do know this is a water wave texture, so this is something new for me, I remember back in like old school hair reviews, when you'd like smell, they'd be like, how'd the hair smell, it doesn't smell fishy, you just, it does smell a little weird though. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. But it can come. This is a 13 by 4 frontal. And it has nice deep spacing in the middle. I feel like companies have stopped doing this. It's 2022. Give me my full parting space. Like all that middle parting space should go all around. But whatever. Let's run down the customization checklist. If you're new to this. Are you new here? Don't worry. I'm here for you, babes. I'm going to walk you through the process of customizing this wig. Since this wig is more of like a brown and not fully blonde, I feel comfortable going ahead and bleaching the knots. If your wig is blonde, do not bleach those knots. The whole point of bleaching your knots on your wig is to turn them blonde. If your wig is already blonde and you bleach them, you're going to damage the heck out of those knots. So, yeah. But since this hair is still in the brown stage... If it was more a little, if like if the knots were a little bit lighter, I would leave them alone. But they are kind of brown. Honestly, I'm trying to see, do I have to bleach these knots? Hmm. Since they're not that dark, I feel like if you're a beginner and you get this wig, you can go ahead and probably skip this. If you're not trying to like, if you're scared for bleaching, you can just use concealer and skip this. And you're wondering, what the heck is she? What is she talking about? What are knots? You see those little, like, black things at the bottom of the lace, like, at the base of the lace, those little, like, dots you see? Those are little knots, literal knots that are tied into the lace because this part, each strand is hand-tied into the lace to give it that, like, hairline effect. So those knots that are tied, sometimes they can be a little bit visible and, like, give a very, like, wiggy grid look to your install. So we like to, so we want to bleach them, turn them blonde so they don't, they're not as noticeable. Who's texting me? Oh, it's my man. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so that is why we like to bleach our knots. But these knots are not like super dark because they have like a darker colored wig. They're more noticeable and your knots are really big. Like if they did like, they did like really big, fat, thick knots, they're more noticeable. But these knots are small enough for us to not have to bleach it. But, you know, I like to strive for perfection. I always like to get as scalpy on it as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and bleach it. And plus, just for, like, teaching purposes. And for me, can remember I said, I'm trying to get into the technique. So first and first, let's bleach our knots. It's just going to make it look more like it's coming out of our scalp, you know. It's going to make it look more realistic. Okay. Let's get into the bleaching. Those are bleaching supplies. 
I really like using this powder for bleaching my knots. You can use any powder. I used to use the regular, regular BW powder. I'm sure if you've been doing wigs, you've probably seen it before, but I like this one a lot better because the formula is just easier to work with. It's more mess free. I can make less mistakes with it. Mix in the bleach, I'm using a 20 volume developer. I'm using a 20 volume developer mainly because of the brand that I'm using requires nothing over 25 volume. If you're using something like the BW bleaching powder or just the standard bleaching powder, nothing special, I would say use something around 30 volume. The thing with bleaching is you want to get the right consistency. So when you're pouring in a developer, pour it in in small batches. Like I pour a little bit, mix, pour a little bit, mix. Because you don't want it to get runny because it can get runny way faster than you think. So just take your time because you want to get the right consistency. Uh, I thought I just put way too much. But that's something I like about this for me, this brand. Of bleaching powder like it doesn't get runny easily like i thought I just over spilled that the developer it was gonna become so watery but like it's still pretty like nice and thick like i don't know this formula is just like really good i feel like i want it a little bit runny i've been learning sometimes the more comfortable you get with bleaching your knots it's okay to make it just a little bit runnier because letting it be a little bit runny let it, will let it hit the knots a bit better because sometimes if it's too thick it won't even like get onto the top of the knots where you can actually see it and then that kind of like defeats the whole purpose but then if you make it too runny it's going to start like bleeding into the hairline so it's a it's a little sensitive dance and balance of finding the good consistency between not too thick not too runny where it's going to ruin the frontal but at the same time not too thick where it doesn't even like hit the knots and it doesn't make a difference you know so it's a delicate dance like trust me if you be bleaching your knots and you feel like you don't see a difference and your knots are not bleaching it's not you babes it's a really difficult technique to get down like me i've been doing it for a minute and i'm still trying to find that good sweet spot but you know what i always be on the safe side so um it's like before i make it too runny this is creamy enough like it's nice and soft and smooth but at the same time it's not thick and chalky but it's not runny Real quick, spray the hairline back with some hairspray. This is just to help push all the hair back. You don't want the hair like to be falling in front of the lace like this. You're trying to bleach the knots because you'll definitely get the bleach all over it. And then now you have bleach on this. And that's going to just ruin your whole day because it would be ruining my day. Trust me. Now the hairline is nice and pushed back. Just, you know, giving us less mistakes. For me, it comes to getting a good bleaching position because getting your wig in a good position where like the hair is not touching the bleach is really important too. I like to just flip it like this, delicately though, and make sure I'm being aware of where the hair underneath the wig is, is at all times. I don't mistakenly like bleach and like, you know, get this hair touching the lace. Gotta be mindful of what you're doing. To bleach my knots, to actually like apply the bleach, I like using a wooden popsicle stick versus this actual brush that I used to mix it. I feel like I have more like control of how much pressure I'm applying. Cause like I said, it's about finding a good balance between getting the bleach to touch the knots. Like when I say touch the knots, y'all, I'm talking about, cause you can see the knots from the top. You need to be able to push the bleach further enough for it to come up to the top up here for it to look like you're bleaching something. But at the same time, you don't want it to start coming. The bleach itself, like, you know, come all the way out here. It's really a delicate dance. So how much pressure you're applying to is important. And I like to use this popsicle stick because I can actually, like, control the amount of pressure. It's like a thing of it, like, I'm buttering my toast. You know, like, I'm trying to get the butter on there, but I'm not trying to drench it with butter. That's how I try to think about it. And I go light-handed at first and just, you know, apply the bleach. I could start from the back. And the reason why I like starting from the back is because um, just like when you're doing like your relaxer, if you used to relax your hair, remember back then, the back is usually takes like a longer time to process. And typically in wigs, because the back, you don't see it that much, the knots are bigger or tied bigger in the back. So they take a longer time to process. So I just, same, same concept. The back does take a longer time. Let's take a moment to pause. Like I said, spatial awareness is going to stop you from making a mistake to pause Flip your wig inside out back to the front and just check to make sure you haven't like pushed 
the bleach too far. You see what I'm saying? Like, you want the lace. Like, right now, I don't know if I should show the camera, but... You see how you can still see those dots poking through at the bottom? That's not what I want. I want the bleach to push through enough where you don't see those knots because we're trying to bleach them. They should be covered up. That's the whole point. But you also don't want the bleach to start like coming up into the hair itself. So I know now I should apply a little bit more pressure. Just a little bit. It's a very dangerous dance. Don't be too scared of over bleaching your knots. It's okay. Sometimes over bleaching the knots actually low key is, is a look. Oh no. See what I mean? Got some of the hairs in the front. But yeah, now I've applied a lot more pressure. Let me get in there. But you see now, you can hardly see those dots because I really went back in to push that bleach. Like it's like really, the lace is saturated. All I see is just bleach, you know? And that is what we want. But I'm telling you, getting this far is a little bit scary. That's why I really like this this brand because it doesn't like get runny easily. Go ahead and take this, this thing that came with the wig packaging. I just like to fold it in the filter thing. Yeah, like this. That way it's like the exact shape of the frontal. I'm so I'm gonna take this elastic band off because I just want it to lay, I don't want it to like start to drip. And I take this with the foil paper. The foil paper just kind of helps it like add heat to the chemical reaction we got going on. So everything kind of would like process evenly and a little bit faster. Okay. And I just put that in there. Nice. And then I let it like I like to let it sit upwards. Like this, so that way, you know, gravity does its thing and the bleach is dripping downwards, not having it laying the other way and then it's dripping into the hairline. Cause we won't dip. And as far as processing time, like I always say, processing time really varies on a lot of factors. One, what type of bleach you're using, what developer you're using, what type of hair it is. But for my conditions, for me, whenever I use this one in particular, because in the instructions, it says give it about 30 to 15 minutes, 30 to 50 minutes, depending on what developer you use and developers do also vary but i always say as a beginner just set yourself a good 10 minute interval timer like just come back every 10 minutes and keep an eye on it so i usually just be like alexa send me a 10 minute timer Ten minutes. Ten. here we are 30 minutes into the bleaching process and usually i wait minimum for this bleach brand exactly 30 minutes sometimes i can have it on for an hour like i said it varies on a lot of things but now that i see the knots have turned to a more lighter blonde shade that is a good indication for me to know that it's ready to be washed out once you see those knots go to like a yellow orangey copper shade that's how you know you have bleached the knots Another good indication of you bleaching your knots properly is that under the wig, like right here, you will see that all the knots have turned orange. Like if you turn your wig upside down and you wash off those bleach and you don't see any like oranginess, yellowness un under the cap and probably didn't bleach the knots properly or something else is going on. Sometimes some hair itself is just really stubborn and cannot be bleached or it's like a synthetic blend of hair and it can't even be bleached in the first place and has nothing to do with you. With that said, now I'm just going in and trying to properly just scrub off all of that bleach to just stop the reaction. And whenever you wash off the bleach at first, you might notice that that the scalp portion or the knots that you just bleached has like more of like an orange yellow undertone. In this case, it was very more orange than yellow. So I like to use a blue and purple pigmented shampoo. This is gonna really help correct the yellow slash orange tones. Blue and purple are great for canceling out those undertones. Sometimes you might have yellow, you might have purple. Sometimes I don't know what undertone I'm looking at. So that's why I just, I learned that mixing these two colors together will help cancel out both of the possible undertones. So I just go ahead and squeeze them a little like a, try to do like an equal parts amount of each and squeeze it into my mixing bowl. And I use my little spatula, same mixing brush to just wix it all up to get one congruent blended color. And then I just paint that on like I would the bleach or any hair dye onto the underside of the wig and make sure I'm pushing it. And I like using my brush instead of just doing it the old way where you just like put the shampoo onto the lace. Brushing it on, I feel like it's really helping me make sure I'm getting the color onto those knots. This whole little process is something I just started doing and it has made a difference in my whole 
bleaching knots and like changing the under color process i just let this sit for another 10 ish minutes and let it sit i don't like letting it sit for too long i notice it does sometimes can like tint the lace a, a little bit so 10 minutes is my max and i'm going to come back and wash it fully out i also do take this time to go ahead and wash the hair itself and shampoo through it because one the bleach is probably still like sitting around in the hair i don't want the hair to start shedding because of reminiscence of the bleach and two it's always good to just wash your hair it's coming from all across the world and lastly you can always tell the true condition of your hair by washing it sometimes the hair comes fully processed and packaged cute and pretty for you but for you to really tell how great the quality is how thick it is all of that washing it giving it a good deep condition as well is how you can get the best quality out of your hair okay hello my dudes and dudettes now that we've bleached our hair it's time to pluck the hairline to give us that coming out of our hairline effect you're probably wondering caroline why are we looking at you from this angle like what's going on here yeah y'all um my wig head recently just broke not recently not my wig head my wig stand just broke actually bad things happen for a good reason okay I was putting on a different wig head. I already threw it away, but a different wig head. I was putting it onto my wig stand and I put it on there and then the wig stand itself just like broke. I was so irritated. And then tell me why I picked up my wig, my, my canvas head, not this one, but the one I was using in particular. I picked it up. I'm over here like looking at it. I'm like, something smells funny. And I smelled it and bruh, I realized this wig head is moldy. You know, it's like a cork head. And my wigs usually they're like sopping dripping wet and you know wetness humidity moisture and i've had them for like probably two years i was so disgusted i was like ew i've been plucking on a moldy wig head but in case you ain't know change out your canvas heads especially if you like do wet hairstyles on them or maybe make sure you dry your canvas heads out or your wig head so you don't get mold because that's disgusting, I realized this whole time. So yeah, God told me it was time to change it out. That's why I had, the stand had a break, because the stand had never broke. I would never have taken a closer look at my wig to realize, is that shit molded? Anyways, with that said, no wig stand, no wig head stand, no problem. We're gonna do it old school way. That's how I used to pluck back when I was in college and like couldn't afford to get myself fancy wig stand. I just would pluck with the wig on my lap. <laughs> like, you know as you would braid somebody's hair. So the first thing I'm gonna do, this little tissue paper, the little tissue paper that comes with your wig head, that comes with your wig, make sure you keep that, because it can be helpful. I like to put that over my wig. I like to put this over my wig head so I have something white to pluck over, which just makes the knots a lot more visible than this like neutral beige color. So let's see, let me just try to find the middle. Uh -huh. okay. oh. oh, I forgot there's an elastic band. Oh my god. It's already hard enough with the wig stand, so now it's just harder <laughs> without it. Anyways, okay. Cool. Now she's on there. I'm going to use some T-pins to just pin everything in place. And I get my T-pins. I just buy me a big bulk on Amazon. Now I'm just going in with the T-pins and just making sure I am getting the lace nice and pulled and taut. You want to have your lace laying as flat as possible. Like it shouldn't be bunched up on the mannequin head for the plucking. Having some like tension with the legs being pulled out nice and taut like this is gonna help the knots pull out. Kind of like when you need like some, when you're waxing, you ever wax yourself to tell you like apply tension, like pull the skin before you wax because the hair will come out easier. Kind of the same thing, kind of. I personally don't like plucking my wigs soaking wet. I like to pluck them kind of in this like, it's like a good, like I would say, I would call this, it's like, 70% dry but the roots are definitely not soaking wet I do like to pluck it a little bit more drier than this there's advantages of plucking your wigs wet versus dry if you pluck your wig when it's dry you get to see the tr since like the hairline is dry you can see the full density because sometimes when you pluck wet it looks like it's thinned out because you know it's wet but once it dries out you realize I didn't even pluck anything and now you gotta do more plucking 
Or on the flip side, sometimes when you pluck when it's wet, the hairline, the good thing about plucking wet is that the hair will come out a lot easier because like I guess it just has more slip to it when it's wet. But at the same time, if you're a beginner, you can definitely over pluck. Like try one time I was plucking this one wig when I first started doing hair and I was like, oh yes, I'm eating it up. Not to realize I literally plucked a fat bald spot, like not even like a low boss, like it was a balding patch. I didn't even realize how bad it was so the hair dried. So so to each his own, try both. Some people are comfortable with plucking when it's wet, plucking when it's dry. I'm okay with both. I just prefer plucking when it's dry because that way I can tell exactly how thick the hairline is. What I just did, I just went ahead and one, I parted my hair down in the middle. The reason why I like parting my wigs down in the middle, I feel like the only part that gets affected by over plucking is the middle part really. Like once you start like mistakenly plucking in the middle, the middle part is gonna look so janky and wonky. Like I only pluck the middle part intentionally when I'm trying to like widen out the part. Like every other part, like a side part, whatever part, I feel you can, you're more likely to get away with plucking, over plucking on, doesn't really show, you can finesse it. But the middle part, once you do it, is really hard for you to fix yourself. And then the next thing I just did was I went ahead and I pulled out the front hairline of hair. This wig does come a little slightly pre-plucked. Even if my wigs don't come pre-plucked, I always like to make, I always say I never start plucking right directly up here in the front of the hairline. I've realized for me, when I start plucking up here first, I'm more likely to create bald spots. And two, whenever I wanna like install my baby hairs and stuff, it's just like, I realize I pluck too much in the front and I barely have any baby hairs. So whenever I pluck, I always like to just go in and pull out the front hairline. If the wig is a little bit pre-plucked like this, I will pl pull out the hairline starting from when it starts to get the thickest. If your wig is soaking wet, I suggest using mousse for this step. What I'm doing right now is I'm just going in and I'm pressing back the hairline. Like when I say press, I mean like pressing it, taking my time real nice and slow, using this back part of the hot comb to really flatten down the knots. This step is really crucial. You can use hot comb. If you're poking your wig wet, you can use mousse. You just want something to help you push back all the hairs standing up straight so you can see exactly what you are plucking. And to pluck, I'm using my Revlon Diamond Revlon Diamond Series Slam Tip Tweezer. You can use any tweezer you want, whatever you're comfortable with. I've played around with lots of tweezers, but this one is the one that I feel like works best for me. One, it lasts as long. It's $12. It's a very expensive tweezer. Sometimes it's $20. Inflation. It's a very expensive tweezer, but this one lasts me long. It doesn't dull because your tweezers can dull out, by the way. If your tweezers aren't working that well, they're probably just old. You need new ones. And these work because they have enough for me that I have enough grip to pull the hair out without plucking a hole because some tweezers can be a little bit too much grip and you end up pulling the hole out. Some are too dull and doesn't even be effective to pull out the hair. You want something that's going to be strong enough to pull the hair out from the roots, but also not too strong where it's going to pluck a hole in it. But at the same time, if you are getting holes when you're plucking, probably not even be your tweezer or you, the knots are probably just too big and tied in too strong. When that happens, you notice you're plucking holes and you've tried everything, stop while you're ahead before you rip the wig. Just do some finessing and install the wig without plucking, without ripping your lace in half. Because trust me, I have ripped wigs in half, like literally in half. Because I was I, I, I was being stubborn and wanting to go for the most plucked hair one. Now let's get into the actual plucking. If you're thinking, oh my god, this video, she's talking way too much. That's the point, my guy. You clicked on the very extremely detailed video. This is the details y'all need to know. Shoot. Anyways. So I, I like to get my hand and get a good grip. You know, so whatever you can, I like to use my hand to just get a nice tight grip on the hair on both ways. Like I said, adding tension is gonna make those knots pull out a lot better. Skipping this front place right here, tweezer, pointy part facing the front, and I just go in a backtracking motion, skipping the middle, right? So there's the middle, skip, and I just pull in a backtracking motion. So I plugged here, skip that place, I plucked right here, skip that place. Skip the middle, pluck, skip, pluck, skip, pluck, skip, going down. I wanna get all my talking points out now so I can just let y'all watch, so I'm gonna t just listen to me real quick. When I'm plucking, I like to make make sure I'm pulling, trying my best to pull those knots out from the root. Like I'm trying to pull that actual little dot out that we were bleaching earlier. I'm trying to pull that dot. It's not really, like yes it's the hair, cause like the hair is attached to the knot, but it's the knots that you wanna make sure you're pulling. That's how you get a clean 
pluck. Like if you notice you're plucking and, it, and like there's like little like fuzzy stuff or the, the lace looks kind of funny or it doesn't look like you even plucked, you're probably not actually removing those knots from the roots. Removing the knot from the root is how you know you have properly, it's how you know you've, you've plucked the hair the right way. You should see little, little knot. Make sure you're pulling this hair from the roots. Second note, I like to do a back dragging motion. So I'm not plucking up like I'm plucking a chin hair. You know, you like you pluck downwards, like you're pulling. I'm doing back drags. Like I'm like grabbing the hair and dragging back. Grab, drag back, grab, drag back. Uh, some questions I get sometimes is like, how much hair am I pulling out when I'm plucking? Um, it's really like, I can't tell you how much hair is like five, three strands. I just try to do like keep this the gapage between each place very like hairline and thin because you don't want it to be creating too many fat ass fat gaps. Now that I've plucked down here in the front on this area, let me just put the hair back so y'all can see. Now that I've plucked down like up here I'm gonna go back but this time I'm taking my tweezer higher I'm trying to thin out the hairline more in the back some wigs depending on how thick they are you might have to go like really deep into the back of the hairline Okay, now that I've plucked it through, push all the hair back to the front. And depending on how plucked, pre-plucked your hairline is in the front, sometimes I won't even pluck at all in the front if it's super pre-plucked and it's looking thin already when I push everything back. But I can do a little bit of plucking up here. Like it's not that pre-plucked. And now for the front, I'm gonna go in lightly and just pluck these hairs in the front. Just create a little bit of gappage, but very so lightly, cause like I said, I don't like messing with the front too much, unless it's like a post-production pluck. So literally just trying to see little places that look really dense and I'm just creating little gaps in that area. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and pluck this side off camera and come back to you guys. Hello, hi. Now, recap. Finally, the wig is ready to be installed. Just a little recap in case you missed it. We bleached our knots. We went ahead and bleached our knots. So whenever we part the hair, it can look like a scalp. And we also went ahead and plucked our hairline. So our wig is ready to be installed. JK, actually, last preparation step I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and tint the lace, meaning I'm gonna use foundation, a liquid foundation specifically. You can use something thicker, you can use concealer, but anything that is your exact shade match, I like to use is Maybelline Fit Me. I like this brand in general because they have like a very, they're very affordable and they have a large range of colors, so it's easier to find your own match with this. And my color is 356. I never do this on camera, but the way I like to make sure my foundation matches my skin the way I want it, I just like tap it on my forehead because it's really my forehead that has to match the best. And, it, and whatever thing that blends the most into my forehead, that is what I use. Like this literally disappears into my forehead. So like, I feel like it's my perfect shade match. No matter what kind of lace I got going on, HD, transparent, da 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 da, I always tip my lace. I will say now, if you're dealing with a lace that's darker than you, it's better to use a shade a little bit lighter because, you know, color math, if you're using, since the lace is darker, something a little lighter can help lighten it up. My main focus is getting that tint to the front of the lace because it's the front of the lace that has to blend in with you know the front of your hairline. Since this has like a built-in elastic band, I'm not gonna use these elastic straps. If you feel like your wigs don't fit you sometimes, sometimes just like skip this part and just install you a standard elastic band like this 
on the sides that can probably help it fit better or you just need to get a different wig cap or you have a low hairline there's a lot of reasons why your wig cannot fit if you want a video on that and why your wig isn't fitting comment down below at least it's nice and tinted so it's definitely gonna blend in see that mm -hmm. versus the edge where it's not tinted versus here it is so i'm just gonna adjust these straps and elastic band so they can fit me better so here's what we're working with very old my cornrows are always old you will hardly ever catch them fresh like you don't have to have cornrows but you just gotta have something that's like semi-flat like don't have a hump going on like a big old, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Just make sure it's flat enough. Since I plan on doing a glueless install, I'm not going to be wearing a wig cap. I feel like wig caps are mainly for if you're trying to use actual hair glue. Like the whole ball cap method and wig caps, I feel like, especially ball cap method, I feel like it's unnecessary. Unless you're doing like a glued install, like actual like lace glue, like hold, hold, ghost bond, like glue, glue, where like the wig is supposed to be stuck for a minute. That can see the purpose because it protects your edges from the glue. But for like regular installs like I'm doing, I honestly prefer just, I really don't be wearing wig caps. Sometimes I wear it just to protect my braids from getting caught in the clips, but mm, to wig cap or not to wig cap, that is up to you. Our wig is on. <laughs> Gotta make sure it's like as even on my head as possible. It's okay if your lace like goes over your ears like this because we're gonna definitely be cutting that, but just try to get it as evenly and well fitted. Don't forget to secure all the clips and make sure the wig is like sitting fully on your head. Bam, <laughs> good. Now to cut the lace around my ear, I just like to take my comb and i just really just try to like trace the shape usually it's like an n kind of shape just around my ear because you just want that lace to fit nice and snug around your ears sometimes i won't have lace that's sitting over my ear but most of the times i usually always have to cut off the lace It just kind of depends on how the wig manufactures it. So sometimes, you know, you will have to cut some hair off. Don't be alarmed. It's normal. This one is just lace. There's not actually any hair over. It's just... Mm -hmm. Now we are in business. Like, you should be able to see your ears over your wig. To lay my lace down, I'm going to be using my standard... Ebon Wonder Lace Spray. This is my glueless spray. It's literally just like a hairspray. Just like a hairspray, it's safe on your edges. They have different types. They have a sensitive one, whole line. I like using this. I'm gonna. So, first thing I'm gonna do is cut my sections. Like I said, sections just make everything so much easier to work with. And when I first started with doing my wigs, I would like cut like even smaller sections. Because the smaller the sections, the more able you are to pay attention to each piece of lace. That's the thing about frontals. Frontals are just so much lace to focus on that it can get a bit overwhelming. So cut your lace in sections and work in sections. Once I have cut my section, I like to go in with a face razor to cut off my lace. And I like using face razors to cut my lace versus like actual scissors because something about the razor helps it just like give you like a more jagged raw edge to the lace. And that's just gonna lay a lot better than having a straight cut line across your head. There won't be a line of demarcation from the lace in your, sc in your skin. So I just try to cut, follow the natural shape of the hairline and just let my, and, and just cut off the lace. And for me, I don't, I like to cut off as much lace as possible. I don't like leaving too much extra lace out, but I will leave just like the tiniest bit, like literally so little. And then once I cut the lace, right, for this section, I go in with the spray. And I like to spray under, like so, pretty good amount. And I use my fingers to just spread it out. If you're gonna make sure for your sides, you're pushing that spray to the back too, because the lace, there is lace all the way back here. And my, since the sides can be a little bit funny, a little tough to get, I like to pull down the side tabs with the side baby hairs, and I like to pull those out during this step. And that just kind of helps me have something to like yank and hold on to to really get those sides to come down. And now to just lock everything in, 
I'm going in with my blow dryer on a, it's still a warm setting, but it's low power. So not the highest, more like a, like a lower power. And I just use that plus this rat tail comb and just push everything in nice and flat till it feels stuck. So it didn't stick, so now I'm gonna go in. And sometimes for the sides, I have to spray under and over. So I'm just gonna go in and spray on top again, lightly. Use my fingers to spread that product out. Make sure I'm gonna spray right here in the corner of my ear where you listen the most. Tap that out. And then again. Now for the top part, I can't spray under because you know I can't pull it up or that's fine. I just go ahead, ooh, see, and just spray on top. And I'm really trying my best to make sure I'm spraying mainly on the lace and not really on the hair, just to help prevent it from the hair itself getting crunchy and hard. It does get crunchy and hard, but I'll show you how to fix that later. Once I've sprayed and tapped everywhere, same thing. and before I turn the blow dryer on, when I'm using this little comb right here, I'm literally staring at my mirror that I have down here and trying to like press down every little line. Like I'm trying to like seal the edges. Now that our lace is nice and has been sprayed down all around to make sure it's like really stuck and I'm not gonna get lifting, I like to take my elastic band and just put that over the lace. So yeah, I'm just gonna let this sit for like 10 minutes just to really give it a moment to sit before I start doing my baby hair swooping because swooping the baby hairs does cause lifting. And while I was spraying this, I realized it says let it allow it to sit for 10 to 15 minutes, which makes sense. So I'm gonna let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes before I sweep my baby ears. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. Even this, take this part off gently. I've like taken it off too aggressively. Ooh, there's some residue. Mm -mm. If you do end up getting some like white residue on your head from the Ebon spray, what I like to do, do this part very carefully. I get some water on napkin. And I say carefully because like I said, you know, it does come off with water. So you want to be really careful with this. And I just try to like, you know, gently scrape off that white stuff. And like if the lace itself is white, it's probably just like, I'll go ahead and spray it like gently try to like wipe it off with this too and check pull back to see if it's lifting. And most of the time it probably is lifting and I'll just use my finger and spray some and then back and just repeat the process. Okay, now let's get into this baby hairs. And for baby hairs, I'm just gonna let voiceover Caroline take that part because that's one thing, baby hairs can be a hit or miss for me. Like, I feel like these days I even love doing no baby hair installs, not for the fact, I mean, ba no baby hair installs do eat, but they're so convenient. Like the stress of getting baby hairs, unless you're good at them, is too much for me. Like, I'm glad we are now normalizing no baby hair wig installs. But, but at the same time, whenever the baby hairs do hit, I love how they look, especially with curly hair. I feel like curly hair just needs a good little baby hair. So, but I, be need, but I need all my focus, so I'm gonna let voiceover Caroline explain what's going on while I play some music to calm my nerves while I focus, because this needs focus. When it comes to doing my baby hairs, I like to have them a little bit dramatic, but still simple, so they'll be bigger than some people might like, but I do a few amounts of them. That's my little medium happy right there. So I'm just going ahead and sectioning out the baby the hairs I wanna use for my baby hairs, and as you just saw me, 
I like to spray that ebb and spray in between where I just parted. This kind of just helps keep the baby hairs flat on my head because the flatter it is, easier to swoop. Some people use their hot comb and just press them down. Uh, uh not me. I will burn my whole head trying to do that. I already burned my head my hot comb on a regular basis. So the ebb and spray is a good alternative to keep them flat. Only thing is sometimes your hair might get a little bit crunchy from the spray, as you see right here. But I'm just using that same little edge control comb to just brush through the hair to kind of help soften them back up. Or you can add a little bit of water, but be careful with that water because it can cause the lace to lift. To help me curl my baby hairs, I'm using this mini flat iron I got from Amazon. Curling your baby hair is something I just started doing. Curling them before you actually lay them down really helps them just swoop easier and gives a more natural effect to it. You don't have to do this, you don't have a mini flat iron, but if you can get your hands on one, it is gonna just make the process a little bit more easier. And then lastly, to actually lay the baby hairs down, I am using Eco Styler Gel. I like using Eco Styler because it's a light holding gel. It's not gonna be too hard and too crunchy. You can use mousse, I've seen people use hairspray. Use whatever works best for you. Hairspray and mousse will give you more of a lighter hold. If you're going for a very fluffy, light, natural, airy baby hair look, then hairspray and mousse is the way to go. I like to use the Ego Styler to just help me lay them down so I can get control of everything, set it down, and then once I've swooped the baby hairs where I like it, I will use my elastic band to lay them down, let them set, and once the hair is set, after like styling everything, if I want a fluffy, non laid down look i'll just brush out those baby hairs to give it that fluffy look so yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and finish the other side off camera and come back to you guys for the actual styling portion my camera died in the mist of the baby hairs but yeah but all i did was i went ahead and finished the baby hairs and i just put my elastic band back on elastic band is key for meltage now let's get into Styling. I'm just gonna go to standard middle part. Keep it easy breezy and go with a standard middle. And I'm just gonna try my best to get it as straight as possible. The middle parts are never that straight, but it's cool. And now we're gonna go ahead and press it out. Ooh. So for styling, now I'm just going to define the curls. I'm going to go with the spray bottle of just water and just drench the hair. When I say drench, I mean drench. Like, don't be shy now. Because that's how we're going to get these cute little waves to pop. So, it's really just water in a spray bottle. And then I'm gonna go through with this little wide tooth comb just to detangle everything first. And then we're gonna go through and brush through it. Keep brushing until we see little ringlets form on the ends. And when I brush, I make sure I'm like scooping it up with my brush like that to make it like really curl on the end. And then I'm gonna just scrunch it all up like this. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. And literally leave it just like this to air dry. Don't like run your fingers through it, leave it just like this. And that's how you get it to look very defined. So I'm gonna do the other side. I like to make sure for, cause it's a certain way I like my middle part here to fall on my face. So I like to hot comb this part up, right? Like upwards to the back. And this part upwards too. So that way it like all kind of falls down this way. It's like the hair falls down this way to the side versus like to the front, if that makes sense. All right, cool. And we repeat. All 
okay so now the hair y'all can't see it i'm gonna come back once it's fully air dry so y'all can see the final look it took the hair about two hours to fully air dry. I went ahead and started getting dressed because I was going out earlier. I'm just going in with my hot comb now to just press down the top because I don't want it to be bumpy. I like a really nice flat top even if it is curly or wavy hair. And the key for a really flat middle part, I like to get that hot comb, that thick back place, and just place it right there, mm -hmm, right in the middle. That's going to really plus press that part nice and flat if you don't have a hot comb but you have like a curling wand use that curling wand to press down in the middle of the part to get the hair nice and voluminous like i said remember don't separate the hair when it was wet now the hair is dry you can go ahead and separate it so i just like to run my fingers through the hair gently and just separate those curls to create some volume but, and last finishing touch is i'm going in with a very light shade mascara not mascara concealer and i'm just popping that in the middle of the part Especially since I didn't pluck the part wide this time, I kept the part kind of thinner. Adding this concealer is gonna really help it, one, look more wider than it is, and just kind of give it a more natural, not natural, but it just kind of gives like a seamless look to everything. But yeah, that is it for the look. Here we are at the final results. When I did my makeup, ooh, she's giving. I love the way the color looks. Like I feel like it complements my skin tone so nicely. I have a soft spot for like wavy hair with colored highlights. It's just something about highlights and wavy hair just always eats. And the baby hairs, mm, see, dramatic, but still not doing too much. That's what I like to go for. But that is all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something because I sure just enjoyed filming and making this for you guys. Like always, I hope you comment like and subscribe and i hope to see you in another one peace out girl scouts goodbye